So we talked a couple weeks ago about Darth Vader's flagship, the Devastator, which served as a powerful reminder of not just the Empire's power, but Vader's power. And I figured today we could take a look at another Imperial Class Star Destroyer that was also commanded by a legendary Imperial leader. Let's talk about Admiral Thrawn's ship, the Chimera. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So as many of us know, the Chimera is an Imperial One-class Star Destroyer that would become famous while serving as Grand Admiral Thrawn's command ship. It served as his command ship from before he was promoted to the rank of Grand Admiral to his disappearance at the end of Star Wars Rebels. So before we jump in, let's talk about some of the modifications because the Chimera was a little bit unique. Now, while on paper it did look nearly identical to every other Imperial One-class Star Destroyer, it did have a very unique paint job. It was painted in a slightly darker base color and had a Chimera painted on the bottom of the vessel to symbolize the vessel's name. This is a very key visual distinction that became prominent in Star Wars Rebels where the Chimera was featured significantly. One of the earliest combat operations we know that the Star Destroyer took place in is an operation to quell a rogue Imperial governor. Governor Quesai of Bodajef had declared his Imperial territory to be a sovereign state, separate from the Galactic Empire, and the Chimera was part of a fleet led to try to sort of repatriate his territory and put down this warlord rebellion. This rebellion was ultimately put down and this territory brought back under Imperial control, and the Chimera, while not the command ship of that fleet, did gain relative battle notoriety during that brief conflict. In fact, the notoriety from that battle allowed Thrawn to advance to the rank of Admiral, where he was put in charge of Task Force 96. Task Force 96 was a group of Imperial Star Destroyers that was dedicated to hunting down rebel forces. During its service with Task Force 96, the Chimera would lead Imperial forces against Bataan, where a group of rebel insurgents had taken up refuge. It would later be sent to Samoon to quell a rebellion there. However, while they were jumping from planet to planet, putting down rebel forces, each engagement, Task Force 96's forces were whittled down a little bit more, and eventually they were completely overwhelmed and pinned down and forced back a little bit. They actually needed to call in another task force for reinforcements, and while the Chimera did survive those battles, it did come out with some battle damage. It's around this time that Admiral Price calls on Grand Admiral Thrawn's forces to come help her deal with a mounting rebel force based around the planet of Lethal. Now, many of us are probably familiar with that. Grand Admiral Thrawn becomes the leader of the Imperial forces tasked with putting down this growing rebel alliance in the Outer Rim, specifically hunting various different rebel cells, but really focusing on a group called the Spectres, who were elusive and causing constant problems for the Imperials in the region. Throughout the duration of this campaign, Imperial forces were continuously commanded from the Chimera, which was serving as the flagship of this fleet, in a very similar way to the way the Executor served as the flagship of Death Squadron under Darth Vader's command during the hunt for Echo Base and uh, the subsequent battles in between Hoth and Endor. The Chimera, under the command of Thrawn, would eventually track and pursue the rebels to Adalon, where they had constructed a fairly significant base, known as Chopper Base. Now, the Imperial forces under the Chimera's command would carry out a blockade followed by a significant orbital bombardment, with the intention of driving rebel forces out. However, in traditional Grand Admiral Thrawn style, they would carry out these orbital bombardments just long enough to weaken the rebel shields before pulling back and allowing them to recuperate. This sort of put rebel forces on edge and threw up a bunch of question marks as to what Thrawn is doing, as anyone who knows Grand Admiral Thrawn, he's playing mind games. Eventually, rebel forces would attempt to leave Adalon and would come face to face with the Chimera and her fleet. And while the rebels would suffer significant losses during this engagement, they would ultimately be able to slip by the fleet and escape. This ultimately led this fleet back to Lothal, the planet where all of this kind of started, to carry out a blockade and eventually try to starve the planet out. The Rebel Alliance was drawn out of hiding and carried out an attack against this blockade, which ultimately led to the Chimera's assumed destruction after being dragged into hyperspace by a group of hyperspace whales, something that led both Thrawn and Ezra, a member of the Spectres, into, well, deep space somewhere. Ultimately, the story of the Chimera is basically just Thrawn's story as an Imperial commander. He was intrinsically tied to this vessel. It became his flagship, and 
would be a very visible sign of Thrawn's command and Thrawn's capability as a leader. If you'd like to learn more about who Grand Admiral Thrawn is and the kind of tactics he'd use and why he was so dangerous to the Rebel Alliance, I'll leave a link up here to a video I have on that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments if you have any other Star Destroyers you'd like to see the story of. Any other Star Destroyers that you think had a very interesting sort of tale to tell, let me know and I'll do my best to incorporate them into future videos. And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in Star Wars, leave it down below in the comments as well. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.